Hello fellow makeup lovers, how are you guys doing today? We are going to be testing out the new Blend Bunny and Ellis Atlantis collection. We've got a really beautiful like topper highlighter, two blush palettes, and a huge, huge eyeshadow palette. Definitely the biggest palette that Blend Bunny has done yet, and this is their first collaboration ever, so very exciting. I am not super familiar with Ellis, but I checked out their Instagram. They are a makeup artist, extremely talented and I wanted to read you kind of just the little blurb for each product because they don't have like a YouTube or anything like that and they didn't have like a video explaining things. I love watching collab reveal videos and seeing like what went into each thing, what was the vision, the purpose. So I'm not gonna blabber on too long. Let me show you the eyeshadow palette because I feel like that's probably what you guys are the most excited about. Blend Bunny it has such a good formula. Their palettes are stunning and this one is Definitely, definitely bigger than my head. <laughs> it says Ellis Volume 1, which I don't know why, just the idea of Volume 1 makes me think that there could be like a Volume 2 in the future. And here is what it looks like. So we've got a really cool mirror and it is a gigantic rainbow palette in my opinion. What's really interesting is that you have a section here that's all like white-esque shadows and it does look like they have a slight duochrome to them in the palette, but I'm sure once we swatch them, you'll be able to see them, you know, compared to one another a little bit more. But as of right now, it it does look like there's multiple of the exact same shade. When I was doing my Instagram video, I was like, you can't see the shifts really. So for this palette, they said that this is more than a rainbow palette. It captures the essence of the rainbow whilst giving you variety, vari very, very, <laughs> I can't speak, I can't speak. New varying undertones. It has a bold matte formula that blends like butter and gleaming liquid metal eyeshadows. The Ellis palette gives you the tools to create without limits and it is going to have 40 high impact mattes, four ethereal veil shimmers, and one liquid metal shimmer, 66 US dollars for this bad boy. I don't know if codes are going to apply or not. I do have an affiliate code with Blend Bunny, but typically for collabs, codes don't apply, but it's just Amy Loves. If you do see anything else on the website that you wanna pick up, if you, if you are choosing to purchase anything from this collection. And then, like I said, we have two different face palettes and these look super, super cute. So we've got the Solar Flare and the Lunar Eclipse palette. Lunar Eclipse is definitely the more me palette. Look how pretty this is. You've got three different tones of pink, a baby pink, a medium pink, and a hot pink. Love, love, love. This is very, very cute. And then the Solar Flare palette is definitely a little bit more like warm, orangey-esque tones. We've got like kind of like a salmon-y pink a tangerine orange and then just a very bright like orange toned red called scorched super super cute so we'll swatch those in just a second but they said that these blush trios harness multiple tones of pink and orange helping you achieve ellis's signature sculpted cheek ellis believes that contour doesn't stop at contour powder and that blush is the key to a dimensional finish those are going to be retailing for 26 us dollars each and then last but not least, we have the Celestial Cheek Glaze. It says this high intensity cheek glaze delivers an instant flush of pink radiance. I'm all about that, love some pink radiance. With a formula that applies like a powder, that gives you the appearance of a glimmering star. And this is going to retail for $16. Packaging again is super cute and I'm pretty sure this is the first like single face product that we've had from Blend Bunny. A little different than anything else that they have. I'm curious to compare this to their highlighter formula from their palette, but here's what she looks like. So it looks like kind of like a hot pink base and it's very sparkly. It does seem to have like a little bit of an orangey shift to it. Definitely not just like a true cool tone pink. It's got a mixture of both shades, which makes sense to go over both of these face palettes. This collection is going to be launching on April 21st at 10 a.m. Pacific Standard Time. So I think that's all the details. Let's start swatching. Let's swatch the face products first, just because there's so many eyeshadows and I don't know if my arm is gonna end up getting stained. I think I wanna start with the Lunar Eclipse palette just because this is the one that speaks to me the most. I love my pinks. So we've got a really bright hot pink called Eclipse. It feels very, very pigmented. We've got that mid-tone pink called Crescent. Very smooth. And then we've got the shade Zero, 
which is a baby, baby pink. Like a very like white pastel based pink. Okay, so there is the Lunar Eclipse palette. Going into the Solar Flare palette, we've got Scorch, which I said is a very orange based red. Super, super bright. Definitely gonna have to be careful with that, but I'm excited about it. I love a red blush. We've got the shade Heat. It was just a true orange, super cute. It actually matches my little orange bubbly, orange creamsicle bubbly so well. And then a flare. Like I said, a salmon pink. I guess I did kind of already describe the shades to you, but that's okay. Very, very pretty. Ooh. Definitely very pigmented. And then for the shade Celestial, let's go ahead and swatch this out. Okay, it feels very smooth. It feels, I would say, very similar to their like High Reader palette if you have that. I can't remember what it's called off the top of my head, but it has six like pretty sparkly shades. I would say this feels like the same formula. Just has a really beautiful like pinky, orangey tone with a gold shift. So there is Celestial. Super cute. Starting off, we have a green row and the very first shade is called Abstraction. It looks like a beautiful, grungy, like true olive shade, just gorgeous. We've got Fatal, which is a mustardy, kind of yellowy green. Again, pretty grungy. And then we've got Magnetic, which I would describe as a yellowy green, but more on the like neon, like getting towards chartreuse side, oh, it looks like, it looks like it's a neon shadow because it's kind of picking up very dry. Hopefully we don't have that problem on the eyes. And then we've got the shade Voltage, which is an even brighter, lighter chartreuse. And Roxy is just snoring in the background, so don't mind her. Okay. That shade did swatch a little bit light. but these two have some really good brightness to them. The shimmer for this section is called Supernova and it looks like a really beautiful kind of green, blue, purple-esque multi-chrome. Very, very shifty and it looks pretty sparkly. We've got Specimen, which is kind of continuing on the neon side of things, but more of a lime green, a little less yellow as we're going along. We've got Infestation. Uh, how do I describe that? Kind of like a spearmint green. Ooh, that's pretty. Okay. Oh, that looks so nice. Okay. Lastly, for the greens, we've got Regenerate, which looks like just a true grass green. It is picking up a little bit light. I am curious to see if this is going to be the same amazing quality from Blend Bunny because it is a little bit more expensive than their normal palettes, but it's also much bigger. So I'm hoping that the formula is just as good as just as loved by me as it normally is. And then we've got Mutation, which is, ooh, that's a very pigmented true green, like a primary green. I always wanna say that, a primary green, but technically the primary colors are red, yellow, and blue. So oh, a true secondary green? I don't know, I didn't go to art school, I'm just trying my best. Okay. See, that one swatched a little bit light, but then this one's so good. So there's all of the greens. Like these teals need to be swatched together and some of these shades look kind of similar and should be swatched together. So maybe I'll do this little eight pan section. I'll do this little eight pan section and then we can like continue. We've got the shade Cosmic, which is a soft teal pastel shade. We've got Vortex, just a little less pastel but the same vibe. We've got Intelligence. These are all just teals, just in different depths. And then we've got Membrane, which looks to be the deepest teal. Ooh, that's pretty. Okay, I like it. We've got the shade Aether, which looks like a little bit more of a turquoise, just slightly less green to it. We've got Galactic. This one's like a peacocky blue. Ethereal, 
which looks like a true cobalt blue, and then Nebula, which I would describe as a indigo, which is just like that perfect in between of a blue and a purple. Okay, so there's what those little sections look like. Very, very pretty. I mean, I honestly feel like there's so many ways to slice a cake and swatch this palette because everything's just flowing really, really aesthetically. So we've got Deity, which looks, okay, it's got like a strong purple blue shift to it. And then we've got the shade Transcend, which is very creamy and it's got yellow and pink and purple in it. So I don't know that these are necessarily coordinating with where they're at on the palette. I don't know that it matters where I swatch them, but ooh, very pretty. Definitely not looking like the same shadow at all. Okay, let's go ahead and swatch these red and orangey-esque shades right here. So starting off, we've got the shade Incinerate, which looks like a really bright red tone. We've got Nuclear, which is a true orange. In, in, energized? Energized, oh my lord. I swear, English is my first language. <laughs> it's like a salmon-y orange, a little bit brighter than the salmon that's in the blush palette. And then we've got Suspense, which looks like a really pretty, soft, kind of like Dijon-y mustard yellow. We've got the shade Ecliptic, which looks like a really dark burgundy. Super, super gorgeous, just like a wine red. Ascendant, like a pinky red. Perception, which I would say is the truest red yet. I thought that Incinerate was, but when I swatched it out, it's actually a little bit more orangey and a little more muted. And then we've got Seclusion, which is a very pinky red. Ooh, I love that one. Okay, there you go. So there's that little section. Okay, let's keep swatching as originally planned. So getting into these pinks and purples, we've got Deviant, which looks like such a beautiful, grapey, pinky purple shade. We've got Hypnotic, which is a hot, hot pink. And Tran... Transmit, which is more of a Barbie pink. And then we've got Sensory, which is a muted baby pink. Okay. I don't know if that one's swatching just a little funny because I've already swatched so many things, so, but that one isn't. Okay, so I feel like there are some shades in here that are just not as pigmented as others. They're not all feeling the exact same. And then we've got the shade Ethereal, which that one actually looks like a true kind of whitey silver tone, super, super pretty. We've got Illusion, which is a very soft purple and it actually kind of reminds me of my favorite purple shade from the Blends palette. We've got Precise, same tone, just a tiny, tiny bit deeper. Look how pretty. Okay. Lastly for purples, we've got Figment, which is a brighter matte purple. And then we've got Atlantis. Okay, and those both feel pretty pigmented. So there is the pinks and the purples. I really like this silver shade. Definitely not a multi-chrome, no shift or anything, but it is very, very shiny. And then last but not least, slash my personal favorite, we've got a whole row of neutrals. We've got some really pretty gray tones, some pretty like true neutral browns. So we've got the void, which just looks like a true black shade. We've got gravity, which is a very deep gray. Fragments, which is a a little bit of a lighter gray and definitely very grayscale, like no blue undertone or anything. Just And then we've got Entity, which is a lighter kind of white with a little bit of a gray undertone to it. Okay. Okay. 
And the shimmer for that section, I'm assuming this is gonna be the liquid metal shadow. It's called the Engineer. And it looks like a super intense, kind of like bronzy silver. Very, very shiny, very pretty. We've got Harmony, which like a gray brown, kind of hard to describe. We've got Muse. Ooh, that's gorgeous. And then lastly for the browns slash the entire palette, we have got Descend, which is a nice neutral brown tone. And then we've got a little bit of a cooler brown, which is called Voyage. Okay. I do feel like this one swatched a little bit lighter than I thought it was going to. But in general, Blend Bunny's formula is very buildable, so there's the neutral section. I'm gonna do my best to not stick to this today, even though you know that shade is calling to me. <laughs> Let's swatch the white shades all together. So like I said, we've got Supernova, that's that like purple, green, pink kind of shifty shade. Deity, which is like a pink, purple, blue. Transcend, which is more of pink, gold, yellow. I feel like there you can see very different from one another and then ethereal which has no shift to it kind of just a white silver the engineer which is that metallic shadow okay there you go they definitely all hold their own for sure if you guys promise not to judge how messy my desk is right now i will include a little clip of what those look like in lighting with my phone like from this angle so you can see all the shifts a little bit better. Okay, so I don't know, I'm kind of feeling a mixture of a little pink and maybe like a little bit of grungy green. I don't really know that I've done that color combo and it's just appealing to me right now. So I think I'm gonna start off with the lightest pink, this one right here called Sensory. I already primed my eyes with the Alter Ego eyeshadow base which is just a see-through base but it does a pretty good job at priming the lid. So I'm gonna take that shade and I'm gonna start it off on my inner corner, a little higher than my natural crease. I actually am feeling inspired by this palette to do something a little bit different, a little outside my comfort zone. And then I think let's go into this like yellowy green right here, Fatal. That one also, that one swatched a little light, right? If I'm remembering correctly. So I think it's a good one to try out. I'm just going with the same brush and I'm popping that onto the outer half of my crease and then just kind of blending from there. Definitely applying very pigmented and also blending easily, just like I would expect from Blend Bunny. They really are one of my favorite indie brands. Let's go into Abstraction, the very first shade in the palette. I don't know if you guys, you guys could even see it. This one right here, the olive, little tiny bit because it's very pigmented and just popping that in my outer V. I'm also doing everything with a Refer 15 brush. I recently just started testing these out. Just popping that in my outer V and blending. I feel like this is definitely a trust the process look. This is a number 13 and I'm gonna grab that same shade and just start kind of fluffing it onto the lower lash line, just connecting a little bit because I think I want to go in with some more pink on the lower lash line but I'm gonna start with this just to bring it all together and then maybe while I have this tiny little brush let's go into a little bit of the let's do a little bit of voyage just right here just to deepen it up even further everything looks to be blending really really easily right now I'm gonna go into the O3 brush, which is just a tiny baby little pencil brush. And I'm gonna start off with a little bit more of Sensory, that first pink that we used. Just throwing it right here. And then for the in-between, let's go into the Barbie pink Entrancement. Just popping that right here. And it's very pigmented, so one little tap goes pretty far. I think I wanna use the shade Ethereal, the like true white tone 
on my inner corner. I didn't clean off the brush, so it might have a little bit more pink to it, but probably that right here. Very bright. And then let's go into the shade Transcend for my lid, just using a refer 02. And I'm just gonna pop that all over. I thought this would be a perfect in between because it has gold and pink to it. And I think it'll blend really pretty into the grungy tones. I do feel like this could be a little bit more of a topper. So if you wanted it to be even more impactful, you could go in with a different matte underneath. But you guys, there we go. What do we think? I obviously need to go into my Blend Bunny Omni Lash Mascara, which I am still, still loving. I do feel like when I'm very sweaty, this does transfer just a little bit on my lower lashes. Just something I've noticed the longer that I've used this. But if I add eyeshadow or powder or something on my lower lash line, then it's fine. It's just that a lot of times I don't powder. For the cheeks, let's go into the Lunar Eclipse palette. You already know, like, I just can't help myself. I'm gonna go into the softest baby pink first just to try it out. And I've really, really been loving the Patrick Ta blush brush, so that's what I'm gonna use. Okay. I mean, even just one tap like that and it's like perfect for a very natural blush day. At least for me, very pretty. I think I'm also gonna take just a touch of the medium pink crescent, just a little tiny. Just a dab, more towards the back of my cheekbones. Very, very cute. I could definitely stop right there and be happy with just like a simple matte blush moment, but we're gonna try the Topper Celestial. I'm hoping the orangey goldness of it doesn't pull out too much on my skin because I just like a true cool toned pink. And what brush to use hmm maybe i'll go into the sigma soft sculpt f11 just to kind of you know it's dense enough to get it down but like not too big i don't know i don't know let's try it out just using it pretty lightly okay so with this brush definitely just giving like a soft glow it's more of a blush than a highlighter for me for sure it's kind of just adding like a more overall blushing look. This is the Sigma and Beauty Bird, my dream brush collection. It doesn't have a number. And we'll just try that on top. Okay, actually I think I like this more. It's giving just more, I like it a little bit more precise like that. Of course, another neighbor is mowing their lawn. My neighbors are just making so much noise this week. Everything I've been doing has been the struggle, so I hope you guys don't mind hearing that in the background, but there's what she looks like. I definitely like a more precise, true highlighter brush for this versus like the diffused look, but you guys can let me know what you like. Uh, that is almost the look. I think I'm gonna be a very simple girl today and just go in with the Maybelline Opal Gloss. I just love this. I feel like it goes with everything. And my lips are kind of dry right now, so this helps me fake that they're not. All right, y'all, so let's talk about my final first impression thoughts of this collection. I think the packaging is very cool. I really, really love the blush trios. I feel like that's what stands out to me the most. If you're like a pink blush girly, if you're an orange blush girly, then you kind of have different tones all together. I like that. I like that it's separate because you don't always want things to be mixed and sometimes you know what your tones are and that's what you want to stick to and there's nothing wrong with that. I felt like they blended really easy. This is definitely a very me blush palette so I like it. I really really do. And then the topper shade, I think it looks pretty but I can't say like that I'm blown away that it's like my favorite topper but I do like how it looks over the pink and I am curious to try it out with some of the more orangey blushes and see what look it gives that. I might really end up enjoying that. And then for the eyeshadow palette, this is a little bit big for my preference. I prefer my palettes to be just a little bit smaller. When it gets this big, it kind of makes me think Morphe, P. Louise, Be Perfect Cosmetics. Those are the vibes that I'm getting from this versus like what I normally expect from Blend Bunny. I think that if you have all of the Blend Bunny palettes like I do, 
I don't know that this is really adding something to your collection. It's kind of giving a little bit of like blends, but extended and with some shimmers. I do think it's really pretty. I love the look I created. The quality was very easy to work with. So at the same time, I'm like, maybe this isn't adding to the Blend Bunny collection if you already have so much from them. But if you haven't really tried that much from Blend Bunny, this could be a really great place to start, especially if you like a bigger palette. You really do have so many options here and I would argue you that even though this is reminding me of some of those other brands that I mentioned the quality of this is definitely way better I'm not mad at it I can see how this will be really valuable for some people and for some others not as much but I think it's a really cute collab like I said for me my heart is all about these blush palettes but that is everything I really hope you enjoyed the video and I will see you again very very soon bye